Hello, I'm Atujuman. You're watching Hornbill TV. Meghalaya Chief Minister and Chief of National People's Party, Konrad Sangma, who is on a personal visit to Nagaland, has called for a press conference with media persons in Dimapur. Sources have informed that Sangma's main agenda will be AFSPA and December 4th month incident. Let's move to the live broadcast of the press conference with our reporter, Esther. Positive move. Uh, it uh, is an objective. The objective is to really uh, get back to the grassroots and uh, also get back to the identity and uh, the Mao Students Union and the local villagers have taken the initiative to promote that and so along with the 88th uh, annual conference uh, this uh, Makhel Heritage Conclave also was held. I was invited there as uh, the chief guest for today's program and along with me uh, the Deputy Chief Minister of, of Manipur and uh, the local uh, MLA and other ministers were also present. Uh, it was a very positive uh, uh, meeting and uh, uh, there were a lot of participants from all over. Uh, while uh, returning, I decided that I will stop over and uh, meet uh, some of the party leaders. Uh, so after this, I will be going to the party office and just interacting with our party leaders. As you also know that um, elections are there in Manipur. So after the conclave, we also had uh, a meeting, brief meeting with some of the senior party leaders uh, from Manipur State Unit of the NPP. And following that, uh, as I said, uh, while returning back to Guwahati today and proceeding to Delhi tomorrow for uh, the annual uh, uh, budget uh, discussion along with the finance minister tomorrow, I have decided to stop here and meet all of you and also the party leaders. So this is a small brief of my visit to Manipur and to Nagaland and I'm open for any questions if you have any. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'd like to ask any questions? So I have, uh, yeah, I traveled yesterday for my constituency which is in Tura by road and I reached uh, Kohima at nine o'clock in the night and then in the morning I left to uh, uh, to Mao and then to Makhel village and I'm returning back from there now and we're proceeding back to Shillong, uh, to, to Guwahati. So you asked me multiple questions there. Yeah. I will try to answer as many as possible. Uh, number one, um, the stand of the NPP and my personal stand uh, on ASPA has been there for the last 20 years. Uh, if you look at my speeches in the elections in Manipur in 2002, uh, you will uh, hear the same words and language that I used then and the language I'm using now. So therefore, it's not a new stand that we took. And this was a stand that even our leader, late P.S. Sangma, was very firm about. That's number one. So it's, uh, it's something that's very, very important. And we strongly feel that uh, this kind of an, uh, an act, a draconian act, uh, does not have place in uh, the kind of society and democracy that we have today in our country. Number two, uh, there were many circumstances that led to the uh, repeal or I should say the removal of ASPA from Meghalaya and uh, a lot had to do with the law and order situation uh, improving. Uh, we saw that uh, law and order had really uh, improved in the sense that there were very very minimum incidents taking place uh, in the state of Meghalaya in terms of insurgency. Uh, at the same time uh, there was a huge push from the state government as I said we have been really very very aggressive about it and uh, uh, we have always stood uh, and maintained our stand that uh, we want ASPA to be repealed. And uh, so government, state governments also play a very important role uh, because, again, law and order is a situation which is handled by the state government. Uh, then, of course, uh, a lot of lobbying uh, and a lot of persuasion has to be done in Delhi 
So all these factors put together uh, had convinced Delhi and uh, we are thankful to the government of India, especially to the Home Ministry for having repealed uh, the Armed Forces Special Power Act from <coughs> Meghalaya, the 10 kilometers uh, from the border of Assam, which provision they had uh, earlier. Coming to uh, the situation here, uh, of course, uh, uh, here also uh, the overall uh, in Nagaland, of course, the reasons, detailed reasons are not something that I'm privy to. Uh, I'm sure that the state government and the central government uh, have been talking about uh, this particular issue. So right now with the incidents that took place in the last uh, uh, month, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, it is clearly shown that uh, AFSPA has uh, been something that uh, has only been counterproductive to this entire issue of uh, insurgency in our uh, in the state of Nagaland and in the region as a whole. So therefore, um, uh, overall, when we are seeing that the economic condition, economic situation we are, uh, is improving, there is a very positive messaging from government of India. Uh, government of India is giving a lot of focus on, on the Northeast. So while all of this is happening, uh, this message of uh, repealing the AFSPA would uh, send a very strong confidence building uh, message to the people. So therefore, um, we as a political party are very, very firm on our stand and we want this to be repealed. Uh, it's not just from Nagaland, as I said, from uh, most of the regions of the Northeast. We feel that uh, you know, while we are moving in a positive direction in terms of economic development, uh, this particular law uh, is just not going with the entire story of the growth story of, of the Northeast as a whole. So therefore, it should be repealed. Um, the, the government of India has put up a panel, and this panel is uh, now examining this aspect. Uh, we have only requested that uh, this panel should, uh, you know, to look, should look into broader regional requirement, not just uh, Nagaland, but since Nagaland is in the middle of the entire, the epicenter, I should say, as of now, about the issue. So therefore, um, it should be repealed in, in, in uh, Nagaland and also in other parts of the Northeast. So we urge both the state government and the central government to work towards uh, ensuring that uh, this particular act is repealed from the state of Nagaland. Handle the law and order if AFSPA is repealed, mm -hmm. and considering the internal problems and issues that is present right now in the state. You see, one cannot say that uh, there can be a solution in one go. Uh, we are not neither claiming that uh, you know, things will be okay or not, which something which really uh, is difficult to say for us right now. But definitely, AFSPA is not helping. That's what we're trying to say. Um, can we solve everything if AFSPA is not there? We can't say. But we know for sure that ASPA is not helping the entire situation. So that's really what our point is. Uh, when we're looking at a situation like this, we need to understand that, uh, you know, that insurgency is a result of a lot of other socioeconomic uh, problems. So here we are trying to address insurgency, which is a result of the socioeconomic problems by using military force. So therefore, the entire uh, process of, uh, you know, finding a solution to the problem, uh, I feel is not in the right way. So we need to have, uh, of course, security measures. We need to have force as and when required, uh, but not in this form. It cannot be in this form. Number two, it has to go hand in hand with other socioeconomic activities, which will build up the overall economic avenues for the people. Third and most important thing is that there needs to be trust between all the stakeholders. So therefore, repeal of the ASPA at this point in time would create a very strong uh, you know, uh, message for trust and confidence building. And the trust deficit, which may be there present right now, could to some extent be brought down and some confidence building could come up, which is very important when we are talking of uh, resolving situations like these. Uh, and therefore, as I said, uh, we are not saying that it uh, whether we are ready or not uh, to handle the situation uh, if it is repealed. But as I said, we have clearly seen in the last many, many decades that ASPA being there has not really helped. It has really been counterproductive in many sense. Uh, and as I said, uh, it has uh, something that uh, has really aggravated the situation in, in a lot of cases. And the recent incident that happened is another yet another example of, uh, of that uh, counterproductivity. Last question. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm not sure about uh, this, this part. Well, uh, I'll take your word for it that uh, they are going to change. But you're right that um, uh, it's just a, a superficial kind of a move and it's not really uh, going to have the real impact at the grassroots level. So for the real impact to be there, um, they will need to do something with the law in itself, not just by replacing the people. Replacing the people, yes, maybe a kind of a temporary measure just to cool down things and uh, take out the way the people who... Uh, could have been responsible for this. But as I said, in the long term, this will not be the solution. So you're absolutely right. We'll have to find um, another way, that is by uh, repealing the law, and that's the only way to really move forward and build up the confidence among the people. Um, the Islam NDP, as well as the other political party, when they tried to visit the... Uh when they tried to visit Hunting after the incident, they were, uh, they were not allowed to do so by the president and government. So what do you have to say on that? Well, uh, we don't know what the reasons were uh, well, that the state government at that point did not allow. Maybe they were worried that uh, uh, that uh, uh, there would be aggravation and uh, you know emotions may come out. Uh, so maybe the state government had that in mind. Really difficult to say about what really was the intention of the government. But uh, the uh, objective of the NPP was really to uh, you know to appeal for peace and to ensure that uh, uh, we are there to uh, be with the people in the time of need. And uh, we wanted to show their support, our support to them. Uh, and that's really what the objective of the party was when we went there. And that's what we did also. But I'm guessing that the state government was concerned that uh, uh, multiple visits by different political leaders could aggravate the situation, uh, which sometimes uh, you know, is a concern, uh, as I also run a government. So uh, there are, these are concerns that do come up uh, when we look at law and order situation. So it could be. But as I said, uh, what happened was uh, not right. As I said, we were uh, trying to only help and we were only trying to uh, meet the people who had been very uh, you know, affected by what had happened and trying to um, show our support in whatever way possible. But as I said, state government might have had the reasons which are not, uh, uh, you know, not known to us. Uh, last question for me. The Chief Minister of Nagaland and the Home Minister had gone to meet Amit Shah just very recently, <coughs> but the civil society organizations, the Konyak Civil Society, expressed, you know, they were displeased that not even a leader of any civil society organization was attending that meeting just to discuss the incident plus the repeal of AFSPA. So do you think that a civil society organization leader should also have been present, especially from Konyak area, to tell them the ground reality of exactly what happened? Well, uh, the meeting was called at the level of the Home Minister of India, and uh, the objective uh, was to form the committee. That's what we could make out. Uh, so really it's difficult for me to comment on what were the reasons why they did not call uh, uh, the civil society. But you're absolutely right. Ultimately, when we want to resolve an issue like this without having the stakeholders and the community and the civil society being part of this, we will never be able to find a, you know, an acceptable and a long-lasting solution to this. So uh, why they didn't call is difficult for me to say, uh, but they should have called. And uh, I'm sure if they have not called, then I'm sure there will be an exercise where they will call civil society, and they should call. And uh, uh, I will be visiting Delhi, as I said, tomorrow. I have a minister meeting with the finance minister. And also I'll be meeting, uh, I have sought an appointment with the home minister. I will be also personally briefing uh, the situation which I've collected and gathered information from Nagaland um, regarding the incident. And I would also brief him from my side uh, on the situation that's prevailing out here right now. Thank you. Uh, One more. Yeah. Regarding Assam border, Assam Meghalaya border issue, yeah. there is an allegation that there is pressure from Meghalaya side on the border to be with the with Meghalaya. You see, uh, one has to understand where we're coming from. Now, for many many years, we have been producing documents from our side, and Assam has been producing documents from their side, and the meetings always ended with status quo uh, as the final decision. What we have felt is that we need a new approach. And for a new approach to be there, we feel that we need to have different uh, yardsticks now. So first is that we felt that the will of the people is important. We need to understand what is it that the people living in that area want. We need to understand uh, what about the contiguity. 
you know is it a, you know a khasi population or is it a raba population or is there a nepali population then assamese population we need to see that contiguity in terms of villages and the ethnicity out there we need to see what ethnicity in fact uh, lives out there we need to see what are the aspects of administrative convenience for the people living in that area so we decided that we need to go broader than just simply historical facts to really look into more micro details of the problem and that's when we started things now the areas where we went to in west khasi hills out of the 36 in the list that we have uh, that in three locations uh, gizang tarabari and hahim there are 36 villages according to the meghalaya records in and out of these 36 villages approximately plus minus i could be wrong by uh, you know 2 3% approximately about 3 4 villages to say maximum 5 villages are non garo and rest are garo villages which means they are more towards uh, you know uh, meghalaya uh, in terms of ethnicity uh, though there are garos in uh, in assam also so uh, it is just a kind of a extension of that aspect and uh, the people living in uh, those areas uh, since are more uh, yeah, garos uh, they have expressed their desire so that is a background of what happened now uh, the question of we going and mobilizing or i think does not arise i have explained this to our counterparts in assam that there is absolutely no question we are trying to find an amicable solution we will respect each other we will ensure that we always uh, do what is best in the interest of the people living in those areas and also in the interest of ensuring that we find a long term solution because we feel that people in the border areas have suffered too long these kind of incidents um, have just unnecessarily created a lot of problem and we strongly feel that um, out of the 12 areas of differences uh, meghalaya and assam will be able to come to you know uh, some kind of a conclusion very soon on few of those areas because we felt that uh, there was unanimity in some of the areas and we saw that we are both agreeing on certain areas and there are certain areas which require a bit more uh, discussion but we will look into that as the time comes so i just thought i'll give you a broad idea of the the uh, circumstances under which these are happening so that uh, you don't get the wrong uh, context so that's the whole history and as i said i repeat that there is no question of meghalaya or assam or anybody trying to influence the people the people have their own mind they will make their own uh, uh, you know choice or decision and the state governments and the chief ministers will sit down and take a final call on how we'll move forward in this state and you have condemned the uh, statement given by the union home minister mitra in the parliament so what do you also have to say on that regarding the statement given by the, uh, by the union home minister yes uh, the, the statement that was given uh, mentioned about the fact that uh, um, that uh, they had tried to stop the people and uh, of course uh, they didn't stop is that what uh, the statement that was given but we clearly heard from the uh, individual who one of the survivors who was there who clearly stated uh, from the grassroots he was right there of course when it happened and they were fired upon and he clearly mentioned that that is uh, that they were never stopped they were never asked to stop so there see clearly seems to be some kind of a uh, incorrect uh, message that has come in an incorrect uh, you know statement that has been laid so therefore definitely this is something i will bring to the notice of the honorable home minister i will as i said i'm sought an appointment to meet him and uh, i will bring this to his notice so these are the points that i've collected from my side which i need to bring in but yes uh, the fact remains that uh, that they were not asked to stop is what the statement from the people so over on the ground the union home minister should take back his word yeah i'll be speaking to him about that uh, it's something that uh, i will be talking to him once i speak to him and discuss with him then these are sensitive matters one has to understand that we uh, we're dealing with uh, uh, the government of india and uh, this is a situation where we require to resolve the issue or which is really the repeal of the aspa so we will take this in a manner that we can actually come to the right conclusion and um, not try to create a situation where we are talking about one statement given by somebody and one statement given by somebody else uh, we need to understand that as i said that the goal is to get the aspa removed so what dialogue and discussion will help us to achieve that is what is important so i'll be handling it at my level and i'll be mentioning it to him and uh, discuss with him on how we should uh we you know uh, kind of uh, correct it or uh you know make a na- another statement about it and uh, i also hear from his side what he has to say where the reports came from 
So all these points, which I didn't want to mention, but since you mentioned it, these are, these are things that I've collected from my side, and I'll be speaking to him when I meet him. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting an appointment on the 30th to meet him. That was Chief Minister of Meghalaya, Konrad Sangma, speaking to the media persons from Nagaland. The Chief Minister arrived to Nagaland today after visiting a village in Manipur. And he mentioned that he'll be leaving for Guwahati tonight and will be meeting the Finance Minister tomorrow at Delhi. Well, the Chief Minister was speaking about AFSPA, stated that he has been standing against AFSPA for the past 20 years. And he did mention that the Dragnonian law as AFSPA has no place in a democracy like India. He also mentioned that the law and order in Meghalaya has improved over the years after the AFSPA has been repealed from the state. And also mentioned that the state government has been working really hard to put the law and order under control. Also talking about the Oting incident where 14 civilians were killed by the 21 para forces on the 4th and the 5th of December. The Chief Minister of Meghalaya mentioned that the AFSPA, the AFSPA is a counter-protective law and also mentioned that you know, the government of India repealing AFSPA from the state will also strengthen the ties between the state government and also it will create a sense of confidence. It will create a sense of confidence building, uh, building among the state government and also the central government. The Chief Minister also stated, uh, when asked about if Nagaland, if AFSPA is ever repealed from Nagaland, is Nagaland prepared to control the law and order in the state? The Chief Minister was of the view that, uh, you know, it will be difficult, but at the same time, AFSPA is not helping at all. And insurgencies, AFSPA was implemented in the state to control insurgency, and insurgency is an outcome of social uh, many social economic causes and that the AFSPA is a counter-protective law and it's not helping at all. Also, when talking about the replacement of the air battalion, the, the chief minister did say that it wouldn't impact as much as, you know, uh, the law being repealed from the state. That was all we have from the press conference. Thank you so much for watching Hornbill TV.